Hi, welcome to another video here at Protopec. Right, this time I'm looking at the slotted aluminium extrusion, 20 by 20 millimeters. This is a, a sample of it here. You see the profile on the, the end there. Now, 20 by 20 across here and across here. We've got a slot here, which is 6 millimeters, and the hole in the middle is 5.5 millimeters wide. Let's give you some indication as to the, the sizes you may need to mount things to the, the aluminium in the future. Now this comes in various lengths. You have 100 millimeters, 150 millimeters, 300 millimeters, and 600 millimeters, which is too long to get onto the, the image there, so pop that to the side. Now I'll give you part numbers for the aluminium. The part number for the 100 is PPAE100 for the 150 is PPAE150 for the 300 is PPAE300 and for the 600 is PPAE600 now we'll just pop these to the side just now so that's your aluminium profile on the end there, that's out of focus, I'll put a slightly shorter one there for you. So that's the, the profile on the end. If you go to the website you'll actually get a, a, a small technical drawing of the cross section of this and obviously the, the measurements are taken end to end here and your 20 millimeters is a across the full width of that. Right now let's move on to how you're going to connect these uh, either together or using other uh, other um, additions to the, the kit. Right, first of all you've got slim T-nuts. One of these T-nuts come in a bag of 50. Uh, I will actually get some close-up photographs of these for you. But they are small nuts designed to be dropped into the, the top of the the unit and when you tighten up your nut it'll spin and lock itself into the track giving you a, a nice firm hold on there there's ribbing on the top of the, the nuts on the, the T part of the nut there so that'll give you a, a nice uh, firm grip when used with the M4 screws or bolts that we, uh, we have now these as, as I've just said are M4. Now the part number on these ones are PPADA1157. Now slightly larger than this particular set are these nuts. These are the, the slide-in or oval T-nuts. Now these are designed when you're putting your equipment together or your your project together to slide in the end so they're not going to go through the gap as they're they are too wide as you can probably see there not going to fit through so you slide those through and then you do your screw up from the top and that will obviously lock the nut itself against the the inside of the the profile in here and the part number for those ones are pp ada one one Five eight. Moving on to the nuts, I'll show you both of these as they're primarily the, the same. On here you have two sizes, you have 10 millimeters and 8 millimeters. Now M4 standard thread, they have the button hex type head on the top. Again here's a close up of it. And again, these come in pack of 50 as well. Now, the part number on these ones for the 10mm is PPADA1159. And for the 8mm is PPADA1160. Next we're going to cover mounting shafts and platforms onto the shafts. So we have a standard mount here. Now this is for mounting 8mm shafts. 
And we currently don't stock the 8mm shafts, we're still looking for a reliable supplier. And as soon as these get added, I'll update a video for you. Now on there you have two mounting holes on the bottom. Now you're using your shaft you can mount those using the oval nuts like so. Or if you get five and a half millimeter self-tappers, they can be mounted onto the end as well. So you, you do have the choice. These have a two and a half millimeter hex bolt or hex headed bolt in there to tighten up the clamp. And this will actually clamp down onto your eight millimeter shaft. And the part number for the linear rail shaft guide is PPADA1182. Now, moving on to linear bearings. Now these linear bearings are for 8mm shafts. We have two styles. We have a small one, which is currently on the screen, and we have a large one here as well. I'm not going to take these out of the bags because they do have a, a thin film of lubricating oil on them. Uh, primarily for storage to stop the moisture getting to them. If you leave them dry, the uh, the performance on them obviously will go down so they are using a, a ball bearing race inside the, the hole here. So I'll leave these in their respective bags. You would put your 8mm shaft down through the hole here, straight through, and that will give you a nice smooth running up and down action on the shaft there. So the linear bearing part number is for the small one PPADA1179 and for the large one PPADA1180. Right, let's move on to the linear ball bearing we have here. Again this is coated in the lubricating oil so I won't take it out as I keep my fingers uh, relatively clean. But this is exactly the same ball race that you find in these and is indeed can be used to replace the, the bearing in there or if you were to create your own platform you could mount these in there as well. And the part number on these ones is PPADA1181. As you can see I've already opened this pack here. This is the stepper motor mount PPADA1297. Right, the Mount is actually designed for holding a NEMA 17 size stepper motor. It's one of our stepper motors that we sell. And it would be mounted in here. You see the, the holes line up nice and neatly there. And these small screws would go through, screw in, and that would mount that as a unit. You also get supplied with nuts, long bolts, short bolts and a series of washers. There's standard washers and also locking washers in there as well. Uh, that's a, a complete kit for mounting the stepper motors onto your project. Now that's the, the mount. So you've got the, the front of it there. The motor part comes through obviously. You have slots on the bottom so you can shift the, the mount up and down the, the rail as you need it. Now that one is PPADA1297. And next we have the corner brace. Now these corner braces are the double corner brace. The part number on these ones is PPADA1259. There's also a single corner brace and that's part number PPADA1255. Double one, double five. But we're currently out of stock of those at the moment, so I can't show you one of those. And this is the, the corner brace here. I'll bring my aluminium extrusion in. And that would be mounted either like that, or mount it like that if you want to give yourself a slightly extended and finished look on there as well. The holes on here are designed to take the M4 style screws, or the M4 size screws rather, 
you would go through here and then you would use your oval pieces or your T pieces to tighten these down. Now the only difference between a double and a single on these is the, the size. The single would actually be cut down to so half that size there and the same on that one be cut down to there and obviously the support and brace would be a half the size as well. So that one is PPDA DA1259. And next on the list is uh, coupling plates. Now we do coupling plates with two holes and coupling plates with three holes. The two hole part is PPADA1217 and the three hole is PPADA1216. And they are quite literally mounting plates with holes drilled through the middle and they're designed for mounting like that and that will give you a nice strong connection a couple of those as you can see there or if you're needing two and you could possibly use that for putting it an M 5.5 screw through and tapping onto the end and the only difference is the, the length the centre hole spacing is exactly the same on there so that's PPADA1216 for the three way and PPADA1217 for the two way there Okay, next up we've got these mounting plates. Now these are designed for mounting your projects together, whether you're joining corner, T-piece, or you're looking for a cross-type configuration there. So we have the L-plate, which is... I'll open these out. I'll open this one. I'll leave the others in the bag there, just to give you an idea. So we'll have the aluminium plate there, and these are cut with a, a 3 by 3 matrix on the, the holes there. This particular piece, piece is the L piece, and that's PPADA1218. You also have a T piece, which is PPADA1219. And a cross piece is PPADA1220. Now these are centers are all exactly the same across these pieces. And that gives you a choice of joining there. Now should a, a 90 degree angle not be suitable for your particular project, we've also got corner pieces here. Now these are PPADA1257 and these are adjustable connectors. Now when you use your part, you'll see that there's a couple of small lugs, they sit in your track. You've got your centre in there, now your hex key can fit in there just, they are designed to run at a slight angle, so there's no issues with connecting that up. And then you would use your screwdriver to tighten up this screw, and that will actually clamp that and lock it in whatever position you decide that you want to put your project in. Now this particular unit here has lugs for connecting on to the end of a piece. So if you wanted to mount it, let's give an example like so. There's no issues with doing that. Or if you were to grind these small tabs off at either side, you could mount similar to that type of scenario there. Now that's the, the mounting pieces for this kit. Next we're going to go on to pulleys and timing pulleys and timing belts. I'll get those together for you just now. Here are some timing pulleys. Right, so we have four different timing pulleys here, it's actually two sets of two. Uh, they are 
designed to go with our 6mm wide belt. Now I do have a belt here. So as you can see it's a, a nice fit there. Not too tight, you do get a little bit of uh, movement on there, which is ideal. You don't want these things actually running you know, tight in there as it will bear the, the belt out a bit quicker. That's a 6mm belt with a 2mm tooth pitch on there. Now the belt itself is PPADA1184. I have that uh, is a 1164 millimeter long. That's its entire distance around there. So obviously that's a, a little over half a meter from end to end by the time you take in going around your pulleys there. So the belt's available, PPADA1184. These belts here, you have a choice of two different shaft mountings on here. You have the small one here, which is a 5mm bore, and a larger size here, which is an 8mm bore. Now they use locking nuts or grub screws here, and that tightens the, the actual grub screw through onto the shaft to lock it into place and then you'd have your shaft either rotating in a bearing or fixed and your, your mechanism going round. So we have two sizes. The small one here is a 20 tooth. The larger one here is a 36 tooth. So that will give you the ability to step up or down depending on how you have these and obviously there's nothing to stop you having multiples you know, mounting them on shafts like this so you can step up or step down to your heart's content on those. Now, I'll run through the part numbers on these. First of all I'll go through the, the 5mm size. So the 5mm uh, bore takes a 6mm belt and that's 20 tooth and that part number is PPADA1251 the 36 tooth one is PPADA1253 and the 8mm ones which I'll leave in the bags here your 20 tooth is PPADA1252 and the 36 tooth is PPA sorry PPADA1254 now you'll have all this uh, kit should you decide to, to buy a set and you need to assemble them so we have got in some of these tools as well. Uh, what we've got here is they're both two and a half millimeter hex drivers. You have an Allen wrench or hex wrench or Allen key depending on how you've be, been educated on what these things are called. Uh, these uh, are just normal standard hex heads. Should you strip one of these just get your grinding tool grind down to a, a new flat start so you've got the ability for the long reach or for high torque on there and then you've got a hex insert for a power screwdriver power tool again with a two and a half millimeter hex driver on the end there now the part number for the hex bit is pp456955 that's pp456955 and the allen wrench is ppada1229 and that concludes the introduction to the 20 by 20 millimeter slotted aluminium extrusion. Thanks for watching.